Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray that you really have a wonderful sense of the presence of God around you today, no matter what you're going through. I pray that you would know, because it's true, that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, we are in this series, we're on the final two days of this series, this short series that we've done called Knowing the God I Pray To. Knowing the God I Pray To. Why have I done this series? Well, this is something that I have to do in my walk with God regularly. Maybe other people don't, but I certainly do. I have to go back and I have to remember who God is. Because sometimes when I'm facing challenges in life, sometimes when I'm going through life and the circumstances of life, Sometimes when I'm watching all the problems of the world on the television screen, sometimes I can be overwhelmed into thinking that God doesn't do anything or God is even helpless. And that's not true. I can go to church on Sundays and sometimes, as we know, church on Sundays can be, well, you're going through the routine. I actually thought that last Sunday when I went. It was like we're going through the routine. And sometimes we can shrink God down and forget who God is. In these final two days of this series, what I want to do is concentrate on the holiness of God. Now, many people stop and go, well, we all know that God is holy. I want to contend and say, I'm not sure that we fully understand the full extent. Let me just scratch the surface of what it means for God to be holy. Uh, Holiness means to be cut off. Holiness means to be separate from. And that's what we see in God, that God is holy, that God is separate from. That what we know is that within God, we find that there is no evil. There is no wrong in God at all. It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. In him there is no darkness at all. Now, when I look at myself, I don't need to think of anybody else, within me, I am certainly not someone that you would describe as being in any way perfect or that you would even describe as holy if you knew me and if you spent time with me and you were with me, that there seems so many things in my life that fall short. But God, that's not true. That's not true of God is holy. Matter of fact, the scriptures go on and say only God is holy that only God is holy. In the book of Revelations, the very last book of the Bible, it says this, Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you and your judgments have been revealed. For you alone are holy. And, And we can stop and say, well, we're not holy. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But there's that sense of God is so pure. God is so separate from everything else. I've used the the phrase at times that God is complete and absolute in and of himself, that God is not that God is not hampered by whether we have a good day or not. If I do things wrong or have a good day, it doesn't make God happier or less happier or change God for God is. He is consistent and complete in himself. We, We also know that even the devil acknowledges the holiness of God. The devil acknowledges the holiness of God. In Mark chapter 1, verse 24, it says this, uh, when Jesus was about to deliver someone who was possessed by an unclean spirit, the unclean spirit cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That, that God is so complete, absolute, and that God is holy, separate from. Now, because God is holy, any people or objects that are, said to, uh, that are in relationship with God are said to be holy themselves. So you, as a, as a Christ follower, are holy. The things that we use in our lives like our scriptures, like the things that that happen in our life that we use as part of our relationship with God, um, that they are said to be holy because they're set apart to God. Uh, in, In the places where I pray, I often don't do the same things I do in those places that I do in other places. We look at churches and we say they're holy because the purpose of them is that we set apart them, set apart them apart for God. 
Maybe there's a chair that you've set up in your house or a place where you pray. And in a sense, it has a particular reverence and holiness because it brings you into relationship with God. So holiness, so we can say that people or things are holy because of the relationship they have with God. See, holiness is an attribute of who God is and that separates him from us. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, it says this. Then he said to Moses, remember Moses was out tending the sheep and then, and then Moses sees a burning bush and he goes over to see what it is. And then the, and God from the burning bush then says, then he said to him, come no closer, remove the sandals for you from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said, further, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. See, 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 the environment around where God is to us can be a holy place. It's a place of encounter with God who is perfect. It also says in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 11, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? And who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Majestic in holiness, so set apart that it is majestic. Uh, see, God told the people of Israel uh, to be holy. And in way back in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 26, it says this, You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from the other people to be holy mine. Why? So, so the holiness of God is, in, is endowed upon people, upon people. So you are holy because God is so beyond, God is so perfect. God is so complete in and of himself. No other being or creature or thing is as complete as God. One of the things that I've noticed is that because God is holy, because God is holy, what happens is that you tend to be, you, you tend to be um, uh, aware of your faults when you come in relationship into relationship with God, because you look at yourself against God, uh, and and sometimes you can see where you fall short. In one Peter chapter one verse fifteen, it says this: Instead, as He who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. So because God is holy, because God is so separate and we become holy because we are in relationship with God, we then have responsibility for our relation, for, for, the, for the things and the way we are. Now, how are we? It's our thoughts, it's our heart and it's our actions. We're called to make our thoughts holy, to think about the things of God and, and the things of of life in the midst of a world that's broken, amidst of a world that is faulted, amidst of a world where there is evil and wrong, that we are called to be holy in there, in our thinking, in our heart, and in how we speak and what comes out of us. Uh, uh, and, and because what we see is that God's holiness convicts us of sin. Um, uh, you remember what Peter often St. Peter often fell short when it came to being in the presence of God. He felt and doing some things. Um, and, and remember, uh, St. Peter says in Luke chapter 5, uh, sorry, Luke says in uh, chapter 5, verse 8, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Peter, when he comes face to face with his own wrongdoing, which happens on a few occasions, he says, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Uh, yesterday, I was tempted to do something that I knew to be wrong. I knew it was wrong. You all know that feeling of temptation. You know in your heart what you should do or you shouldn't do. And there was something that I knew afterwards that I would, 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 um, would, would if I did it, that afterwards I would know that I had done something wrong. And, and when I was thinking about it, the thought that flashed through my mind is, it's not that I have to say sorry to anyone particularly. It's that I would have to say sorry to God. And God, who is so holy and so perfect, calls me to be like he is because I am already holy, because he has made me holy. And just as Peter says, Jesus, go away from me. I'm not living up to the person you've called me to be. Uh, when we recognize the holiness of God, 
We just don't do it because we get the guilt. I shouldn't have done that. But we, we, we come into that place where we stop and we say, should I have acted, thought, spoken in that way? Because God who is holy would not. Because within him there is no fault. And God is calling me to be like that. That's a huge thought. Hard to do. Very hard to do. And certainly I'm still struggling in that journey with God. Hey, why don't you reflect today upon the holiness of God? That God is so separate. But because God is in relationship with you, you are called to be holy. You are called to be separate in terms of your thinking, how you speak, and what's in your heart. And in a sense, this is the essence of holiness, being a committed Christian person in your walk with God. I pray it blesses you today as you reflect upon that and pray through it. It's a very deep thought, and we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Loving Father, we thank you today that you're with us. I pray, Lord God, that you bless us as we wrestle with ourselves being holy as you call us to be holy. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.